given a curve and a point to find the point on the curve that is closest to a given point. We're kind of at an exciting place, uh, but also at a crossroads, because we've developed a technique that combines geometry and algebra, and has a number of benefits. It preserves the geometric insight, but also allows us to use our algebraic intuition to solve problems. So that's the exciting part of it. The crossroads part of it is that we'll discover that Although on the one hand we can gain tremendous geometric insight into all sorts of problems, when it comes to calculating a specific quantity for a specific curve, this framework is quite deficient. For that you need coordinates in the ambient space. So I'm trying to get there as fast as possible, but there's still just so much to cover in the world without coordinates. And we already have a little bit of a coordinate because on the curve, we have a parameter. That's like a coordinate system on the curve because every point is indexed by a number. So we're already working with numbers a little bit, but it's not enough because we don't have coordinates in the ambient space. So today let's focus on the positive aspect of that because what that allows us to do is still preserve geometric insight and geometric intuition. And today, and maybe in the next lecture, we'll just understand lots of geometric quantities having to do with curves. We'll understand the unit tangent. We'll understand the curvature normal. We'll understand curvature. We'll understand the binormal. We'll understand torsion. And perhaps a few other quantities and relationships among those quantities. And it's very beautiful and, once again, very insightful. And, uh, yeah, so we'll do that, but I will also show you or allude to what the drawbacks are. And the drawbacks are uh, a significant lack of robustness that invites further algebra algebraization of the approach. Okay, so right now I'll consider one problem. It's also in your homeworks, but so I'm doing one of the problems from the homework for you. But it's very pretty, and uh, I can't resist doing it uh, because it's, the calculation is so short and the insight is so direct that it's just very appealing. And the problem is, given a curve and a point, to find the point on the curve that is closest to a given point. So we'll put our origin here, so I might as well call it O. So we're looking for the point P that's closest to this point on this curve. And I think, intuitively speaking, you you agree with me that it's probably a point near here. So what does it mean to find it when you don't have coordinates and you don't have equations or anything like that? Well, to find it means to characterize this point geometrically, which is to give some geometric property that this point satisfies. That's what it means to find it. So we're li really looking not for the point because we have really no way of specifying it, but we want to describe it, or the word that mathematicians use is characterize. I think the word characterize means describe in a way that pretty much defines it. That's what the word characterize means. It means describe slash define. So that's what we're going to do, and what we're going to discover is that this point is such that this line is orthogonal to the curve. Orthogonal to the curve means orthogonal to the tangent at this point. Makes total intuitive sense. You guys are with me? Okay, so a couple quick disclaimers. Number one, it's a local property. If you imagined that a curve, should I draw it? Yeah, I think green will not interfere. If the curve looked like this, you know, then it would be this point. And uh, let's see. And then if it went like this, then maybe it would be this point, right? And all of these points are characterized by the same geometric property. So, and then also, if the curve went like this and stopped here, then it would be this point, and it would be characterized by the same property. So, what, I w what I'm trying to say is that we're solving this pro problem in a local sense. So, in a given neighborhood, 
sufficiently small, as an analyst would put it, we're looking for the point that's closest to this, to the given point. We're not solving a global problem. I think global is the word, not global. Global is the word, yeah. This is not, we're not solving a global problem, we're solving a local problem. Just like in calculus, when you're looking for a minimum, you find local minima. Remember the word local? That's what it means. There might be several. This principle doesn't tell you which one is the overall minimum, and it certainly wouldn't tell you the right answer if the curve is not, continue, doesn't continue to infinity or is close. I mean, if it just terminates like this, then remember how in calculus you would also have to check the edge points, and it was just a little bit messy and not quite elegant. So we're leaving all of these issues behind the scenes and just focusing on this local problem where we want to show that the optimal point, we're just going to focus on the black curve, is orthogonal. Uh, this, the line connecting the given point to the point on the curve is orthogonal to the curve, meaning orthogonal to the tangent. Okay, so first I'll do it not the ultimate way. First I'll do it by appealing to intuition. How would you intuit that this is the right answer. And the way you would intuit is you would say, well, consider this point and also consider a nearby point. So it'll be some kind of an infinitesimal argument. That's very convincing, but I'll finish that sentence in a little bit. Uh, I, have, I can criticize it. Uh, you'll see how it's inconsistent with our overall frame goal with regard to the framework. So if you consider a nearby point and you can say, this is pretty much straight. I buy into that on an intuitive level. And then you connect this point with this one. Well, then this line is longer because we have a right triangle and this is one of the legs. And this is, whoa, I'm butchering it. And this is the hypotenuse. And the hypotenuse is longer. So any other point the distance would be greater than from this point where, the, where you get the right angle. Does that kind of make total, <laughs> kind of makes total intuitive sense? I think it absolutely does. I think in a physics course that's the argument that would be used. And I find it extremely helpful. I think it's a great argument. What I don't like about this, here comes the criticism, is that for any problem like this, you have to go back into your uh, bag of ingenuity and geometric intuition, and ad hoc approach to every given problem, and back to having to be talented, insightful, and experienced, as opposed to having an incredible analytical tool that just does the work for you. So, I like this argument. I find it very helpful, but our aspiration is to develop an analytical framework that does the work for us. So, we have that framework already, so let's do that. So, I will Call this my vector u, where I now like using capital letters. And I will parameterize the curve uh, by uh, a parameter gamma. And this is my origin. So then the distance that I'm interested in, and it's now a function of gamma, that I want to minimize. So might as well minimize the square, so to avoid square roots. You can do it with the square roots, and you will notice in one step how it doesn't make any difference, just makes it a little bit messier. But it's a very cool, not even a trick, just the tiniest of shortcuts to minimize the square of the distance instead of the distance itself. It's the same thing. Is u dotted with u? Okay, that's, <laughs> I think to me it's the highlight uh, because it goes back to the statement we made before that you can do anything you want with the dot product and other elementary vector operations. Okay, so the same is here. So whenever you need to turn on the analytical framework that we've been discovering, have it kick in, just translate the problem into vectors and possibly, maybe likely, the dot product. You guys are with me on that? Okay, great. So. What do we have on the left? Just an ordinary function of a variable that we're trying to minimize. So f equals d squared. So d squared was right. I just want to call that function f. 
This is the function we're minimizing. And you remember from ordinary calculus how to minimize an ordinary function of a real variable. You just take its derivative and equate it to zero. You guys are with me? And here comes the cool part. We know how to apply derivatives to expressions like this. And what we find is that the derivative of f is apply the product rule, which we proved. And so we have u prime gamma dotted with u plus u dotted with u prime gamma. I'm only saying it and not writing it because we've done it before, which the two terms are the same by commutativity. So we have, and we need to equate this to zero. And what does this tell you? It tells you that u is orthogonal to u prime. You guys are with me? So that's the answer. Well, the answer is really this. I'll drop the argument. Okay, and now let's go back to the original problem and see what it's telling us. It's telling us that u, which was this vector right here, is orthogonal to u prime. All right, but as we discovered last, the last time, u prime of gamma is a vector tangential to the curve. There it is, okay? So what we have derived by using an analytical technique which at no point required any insight, ingenuity, or geometric experience, we got back the criterion or the characterization of this point that we've been looking for. And that's all there is to it. And here is the complexity of the calculation. So this is an example I kind of want to pause because it's such a satisfying moment, right? It's something that we knew would be true. We didn't think it would be challenging. But we probably didn't think that once we wrote down the problem and just took derivatives of both sides, which is the only thing that we can do. So at every moment, we did the only thing that there was to do. First, we could write the identity. Then once we have the identity, we could take the derivatives of both sides. And then calculus tells us to equate it to zero. And then we just looked at what it's saying, and it's our answer. So not at any point did we even have to choose between two things that we could do. So it's really a book that writes itself. It's like watching a Hollywood movie and you know exactly how it'll end, you know? But you still enjoy watching it because the actors are good looking and the evil and evil gets punished, right? So we still watch it. So that's kind of what happened here. We were just observers and the story was writing itself. And there you go. And that's the answer. Okay. Yeah. One other thing I'd like to mention is this. If this was a problem in your calculus class, which it could have been, what would you have? You would have a Cartesian coordinate system. This curve would be given either as a function f of x, or if it's a little bit less uh, butcher-like, it would be given by a parameter parameterization, right? Then you would write this uh, formula, not so complicated, for the distance between this point, maybe with coordinates x0 and y0, okay? And then you would have an explicit expression, especially if these were actual functions such as sine of t and maybe e to the t. That's a nice curve. No idea what it looks like. Okay, so if you have a curve like that, you would find an explicit expression for this function. You would take the derivative, and what would be a positive there is that you would find precisely uh, gamma t doesn't matter. Precisely the point that's closest, right? And that would be nice because you could say it's the point with coordinates 0. 0.5 and 3, something like that, right? And that would be great. So that's great specificity. But, would you, but what you would have no idea about is that you actually found a point where this line is orthogonal to the curve, right? So the geometric insight would be lost as soon as you introduce coordinates and parameterize the curve, and then it will be never regained. You will have no idea that you found a point that has this beautiful geometric characterization. So, 
pros and cons to everything.